Hi everybody! So here are the latest round of updates that are now going into the alpha champ. First thing you're going to notice is that the quality, uh, the anti-aliasing quality has increased. I'm now using temporal anti-aliasing which looks a lot better. Some people may not prefer it so eventually I'll have in the graphics options uh, I'll give you the ability to switch the anti-aliasing methods as well as turn it off completely in case you're running older hardware. There are now some screen space reflections which uh, do a better job at uh, showing some reflections on the floor and the glass and so on. Again, you'll be able to control that, turn it on and off. And that's about it for the quality settings. Overall just looks a little bit nicer because of, of those add-ons. Most of the conversation today will uh, talk about the electric engine updates as well as how the batteries behaved. So let's uh, move on to uh, a discussion about the less lead acid batteries, the subhad. So I've covered this before in other videos and we'll probably have some final videos once the game is done. Basically the sub had uh, two batteries. Each one was made of 62 cells. Each cell sat at around 2.1 volts. And when you take the full capacity of the batteries together, we could see that at a discharge rate of about 200 amps, we had 50 hours worth of capacity or 9,800 amp hours. At a really high discharge rate, basically the electric motors full on and all the different auxiliary items in the boat on, we only had about 90 minutes worth of capacity, which equals about 54, 50 amp hours worth of, of storage. And unfortunately, what we notice here is that the final cell voltage was uh, really, really low. So this is definitely not recommended. It's emergency mode because there are side effects uh, when you run lead acid ba batteries this low, the deep discharge. So under the hood, the simulator does simulate, based on the amperage draw, the capacity of the battery. The other thing that we're simulating is the resting voltage as well as the voltage under load. So the C rate of a battery is basically uh, the discharge level that you're putting out relative to the capacity of the battery. And this is a standard curve that you can see here for lead acid 12 volts, even though we're working with 2.1 volt cells in the game, you can see that based on the state of charge shown at the bottom, uh, there is a drop in voltage based on how much uh, you're discharging. So at 100% capacity when the battery is full, if you were to pull one third of the amperage relative to the capacity, so let's say you had a 100 amp hour battery and you're pulling 30 amps, you would drop from 12.7 volts down to about 11.7. Uh, and this chart is representative uh, of basically the, the plot that's being simulated under the hood. So when you start getting near a 0% state of charge, you could see the huge impact pulling significant load has. It's very detrimental to the battery and to health. And here is just another chart showing basically similar data based on the discharge level relative to the capacity of the battery, just how long a typical battery lasts. So what I wanted to get across is that uh, there are two things being simulated under the hood. One is the voltage drop relative to the amperage uh, discharge amperage of the battery and two being the capacity of the battery. The higher you're discharging it the quicker the capacity will drop or the less overall capacity the battery has. Eventually we're also going to simulate uh, things such as uh, cycles so the older the battery is uh, the less uh, robust it is and also temperature effects on the battery. So getting back into the game, let's see just exactly how that translates to, to gameplay. So for now, our voltage regulator pulls in the 130 volts from the battery. You could uh, attach it to battery bank one or two. For now, it's one, which is the aft. And we'll see that we're regulating our voltage to about 110 volts output. Then you can see the lights dimming uh, or reflecting the change of voltage. For now it's not automated, which means that it's all manual. Next thing we're gonna do is turn the power panel on, turn on the contactor switch, so we now have uh, power to, to the panel, and we're gonna put our batteries in parallel. This means we're gonna take our 
uh, bank and basically load balance across both of them at 130 volts. If we put our motor forward, we could actually turn the motors on. Before I do that, let's talk about all the different gauges in a little bit more detail than the last video. The main battery voltage gauge shows us the current battery uh, voltage. Again, as we start pulling amperage, we will see this dip. The ventilator amp meter shows us uh, how many amps we're pulling for, for the ventilator, and eventually we'll be able to control the speed of the ventilator. We need to pull the, down these electric motors, both when we're running them, as well as when we're running them in charging mode, since they could put out a lot of heat. Battery current is the total current being uh, fed through the batteries into the motors. And we have a gauge scale switch uh, between up to 800 amps all the way to 4,000 amps. The motor was made up of two individual uh, motors itself. And you can see here motor one and motor two. Eventually we'll have the option for you to disengage one or the other depending on uh, damage. So if you wanted to run a single motor, you could. And we also have the field of the motor. So the way these motors worked that they had a speed controller. And basically you fed amperage through the field of that controller. And the main motor would basically attempt to balance out the field strength with the internal rotation of the engine. And that's how you controlled it. So at 0% power, or 0% uh, resistance here on the speed controller, we were feeding 11 amps through the field. So the, f the motor did move. You couldn't have the motor off. So if it was engaged, it had minimum RPM. So we would start at 11 amps, and the field strength would go all the way up to 26 amps. So what we'll do here is we'll put the motor in uh, series which means it will have the maximum resistance and the slowest speed. So once we engage it, we get it to minimum RPM. You'll see here it's about 50 RPM on this motor. Because you did need some power to basically get the, the motor spinning. So there's a minimum amount of current you had to push. And this is almost creep mode. So creep mode actually had its own button and it would go a little bit slower than this, but basically this is the minimum safe speed we would achieve manually. We'll do the same thing here. Just turn the panel power on. Let's see, oh, I missed the direction. All right and we will dive. And I love seeing the boat eventually dip as we start diving. Like I mentioned in the last video, the diving controls are a little bit more intelligent now. They control the hydroplane and attempt to reach a certain dive angle based on the difference of where we are and where we want to be. So right now we're creeping along, barely moving, 1.6 knots. And we don't see much change in the voltage because we could see here, we're pulling a total of a little less than 600 amps. Each motor is using less than 300 amps a piece on each side. So altogether, the batteries are seeing about 1200 amps worth of load. We can change that by putting the motors in parallel. So the resistance is halved. So they uh, end up utilizing twice the amperage and also putting the batteries in series so we get uh, double the voltage. And what you'll notice is, as I'm doing this, the lights flicker. Like I mentioned, we have a drop in voltage, and because the regulation is manual, we're now near 100 volts instead of the 110 we were at before. Again, if I was to step back, you can see the lights flicker based on the load we're putting on the circuit. In a maximum, which uh, would be done through very short bursts, 
Usually this was a maximum of 75% speed control at this rating. Uh, we are pushing now almost uh, 320 RPM. So this is above the rated capacity of the motor. Definitely not recommended. We changed the gauge of the amperage. We're now at 1.6 thousand amps per motor. And we're hitting a little over 8 knots, which is very, very accurate based on the testing data available for the Type 7. Maximum recommended was about 75% in this setting, which was right around 295 RPM. And like I mentioned, as the battery uh, gets drained, you'll see a change in the light levels, and this is where you would have to play with the voltage output across the board. So beyond lights, you had a number of different systems that required power amongst the boat. So eventually the total amperage that the boat would be using from the electric motors would be quite significant. As you saw in the documentation, up to 3500 amps, which would drain your batteries rather quickly. So all these gauges are now working. The RPM is being simulated accurately. Uh, what's happening under the hood is based on the amperage being fed to the motor and the known efficiency rate, we are calculating the horsepower output, which then turns a shaft uh, that creates a specific RPM. You'll notice though that the RPM change is immediate. That will be worked on next. And also the interaction between the diesels and the electrics and the clutches in between will be tackled. Because if you ran out of high pressure air, and you can start your diesels, you could actually use the electric motor to spin the shaft to get the diesel started, and then basically disconnect the motor, or run it in um, charging mode if you wanted to, once the RPM was significant enough. So this is out in alpha now, and we can see looking at the speed, 7.5, 7.6 knots or so, that this is pretty accurate based on the data available, the known performance data. And eventually, when the batteries do start losing uh, capacity and voltage, the RPM would be affected, everything would be affected. So hopefully you guys are enjoying seeing this and look forward to being an engineer in the electric motor compartment. The one or two engineers, depending on how many subsystems you want to turn on or off and how many you want to manually control versus automate. Thank you all for watching.